Hey guys, what's up, and welcome back to my channel. For this ooky spooky Halloween season, I present you a doll that actually haunted me when I was growing up in the Philippines, and that is a Manananggal. Manananggals in the Philippines is kind of like a vampire-like creature of the night. They are described to be scary, hideous, and usually they are female. They are capable of severing their upper torso and sprouting huge bat-like wings to fly at night in search of victims. I do not know why they can't take their entire body and fly around the city. Yeah, they just separate and they just leave their lower half walking around at night. They are said to favor pregnant women over anyone else and they use their really really long tongue to suck out the fetus's heart inside the pregnant women or suck out the blood out of whoever's the victim. So yeah, growing up in the Philippines, the sense of folklore was just so heavy in our minds. So I thought it would be so appropriate for this Halloween season to bring you a little of my culture. Well, you know, something that frightened me in my culture. <laughs> I want my Manananggal to have a bride-like look, so I was really really inspired to give her a Terno or a Barutsaya type of look. Imelda Marcos inspires me so much when she was in her youth, even until now, her fashions are just so immaculate and so just elegant. And these are kind of like the concepts that I had in mind when I was designing her dress. You guys may already know, but this is a massive collaboration between these talented artists. So make sure you check out Anastasia Custom, Characters Factory, Doll Mill, Delightful, Doll Motion, Doll's Brand New Look, Doll Elementary, Cairo's Workshop, Moonlight Jewel, GM Art, The Doll Fairy, Kosomolski, Popin Atelier, and Tamakyu Art. I will be leaving their links down below and you already got a preview of their amazing dolls so you guys should definitely check them out. With all that being said, let's get started. For this project, I will be using this bell body from the Disney store. As you can see, she has the regular articulation, not double jointed or anything, literally just 90 degrees. And for her head, I'm actually using a different bell. I think this is by Mattel. I'm not entirely sure. As you can see, she has a generic face and she doesn't really have the animated look. And I am going to be giving this doll new hair, so I'm just taking my scissors and pliers to clean it off. You know, the usual, the use, and so we have a clean base to work on. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of modifications, so let's go ahead and start removing her factory paint as well with acetone, or you can also use nail polish remover if it has acetone in it. Now, I followed Catherine's Banshee tutorial from last Halloween. Was it last Halloween? Yes, it was, I think. <laughs> because I also wanted to give my doll a really extended open mouth look. And so her tutorial was very, very helpful. So thank you for that, Catherine. If you guys try to do this with an X-Acto knife, please, please, please be careful. It is very, very sharp. And as a tip, I also softened the head with hot water. I dipped it multiple times when I was working with it so that the vinyl of the head is very, very soft and easy to poke around. I added hot glue to the chin because it dries very very fast and it actually helps to stabilize the epoxy sculpt um, for the teeth and all of that jazz. So I didn't realize that this doll's head was so small and tiny and getting details into that small mouth was a lot harder so I had to use um, pins which Catherine also used pins and all that but it was just so much harder to fine-tune the details and the teeth and everything so I'm like ugh but it's alright we managed we managed in the end don't worry spoiler alert we managed oh my god I'm literally like giving her new veneers it's like wow I'm like a dentist or something wow <laughs> I also added things which I forgot to film, but yes, I added upper fangs to her teeth, because why not? She is vampire-like anyway. 
I'm taking this soft wire to kind of weave the jaw that we took out um, back to her head as you can see and if you can see inside her mouth there is a tiny hole in there which is intended because we are going to be adding her tongue later and I wanted it to be removable. I'm using this Gorilla Clear Grip Bond glue, which is not as strong as I would like it to be. I would have used epoxy glue, but it just smells really, really bad, you guys. Like, toxic. It makes my room smell so bad for, like, days. But it's okay. I'm just using it to fill in the gaps in between, like, the spaces. And it is actually still flexible. However, it is removable. So that's the bad part. But we're gonna give her an all-over facial anyway with epoxy clay. <laughs> I wanted her body and some of her face to actually have a grayscale type of look, which if you guys watch Game of Thrones, you would know what that looks like. It just looks like gross scales and I wanted to kind of replicate that as you can see I'm giving her a little higher cheekbones to kind of really have the sunken in look to make it look a little more terrifying but everything is rugged and just textured nothing here is smooth at all so I kind of had fun creating different textures and using different techniques in order to create the grayscale type of effect When I first thought of making a Mananangal, I actually wanted her to be kind of pretty, like, you know, my usual style. But I wanted to kind of break out of that and really serve you guys some fierce, scary, spooky ooky look, you know? <laughs> Meal break! While the clay and glue on her head is drying, let's go ahead and work on her body. And this is also going to be a doozy, you guys, so be prepared. Let's go ahead and cut her in half because that is what Mananangals are. They are in half. Um, but please be careful and be patient when you are trying to do this. Since her torso is actually kind of hollow, I'm gonna go ahead and glue some foil in there just as a filler and just to kind of fill it in so we can kind of work on it a lot more and have like organs coming out of it or something of that effect. While that's drying, let's go ahead and work on her bottom half and I'm just gonna be adding some small intestines and large intestines just like hanging in there you know because she already separated so her guts is just out and about for everyone to see yeah <laughs> I'm also giving her the grayscale kind of look and also the flesh ripping out kind of look over here at the edges just so that it blends in with the entire look after the paint job is done. Her entire legs is actually going to be covered in the end but I still wanted to give her legs the veiny look like raised veins and we're going to emphasize that and with the paint job this is going to look really really sick literally like sick like she looks she'll probably look sick and deranged and all that <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and add the grayscale type of look onto her torso and as you can see i'm emphasizing her clavicle just so that it looks a little more hollow than usual and then we are adding the textured epoxy clay in there it was really really random there's no like literal plan or technique with this i was just literally taking small amounts of clay and just slapping it in there i added hot glue there as well just to give it an added type of texture and i'm also going to take that all the way down her hands I also wanted to give her pointy ears just to exaggerate the ear shape because I feel like under all the hair it's gonna get lost in there, which it still might, but at least we tried. <laughs> 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and start layering the base skin tone, which is going to be kind of like a light yellowy beige for her entire body first. And then I'm gonna start adding layers of gold and copper and then gray in there. I just wanted her skin to have some kind of shimmer to it to kind of represent more of like a scaly effect, but I also wanted it to be kind of dingy and really have the grayscale look from Game of Thrones. And now we can finally work on her face up, which I am so excited to show you guys. I want her to have such a ferocious look, bushy eyebrows, menacing eyes, wrinkles all over, just like, just, I just want her to look really dark and scary, which I've never done before. So this is kind of interesting. This is like so fun. I'm just using my Derwent watercolor pencils to sketch out the features that I want her to have. And we're gonna start with there and work on layer by layer. And yes, we primed the face first with Mr. Super Clear. How can we forget? I don't think Mananangals usually have red eyes, but I wanted to add that there because I'm going to go ahead and smoke out her eyes and I didn't want her eyes to be lost in it. So that would be such a great contrast and a pop of color for her face. For her wrinkles to look more realistic and more 3D, we are going to highlight them using a very very light beige color pencil. To have a cleaner transition from her smoky eyes to her actual eyes, I decided to go over it with red paint. For her lip color, I'm giving her the Jeffree Star Velour Liquid Lip in the shade Weirdo. I'm just kidding, I'm just using a matte black acrylic paint just to give it a better contrast with her face and I thought it looked good and a little gothic. I'm giving her pearly whites for now until, you know, she eats and I'm actually also blushing her face and her body with some chalk pastels just to have more dimension with the coloring and her skin. Okay, so now let's say that she already ate, so now we can make her teeth and mouth dirty and gory and, you know, filled with catch. You know what? It's blood. It's filled with blood. Um, I, I gave a warning. Y'all know what's happening. I just want her blood to be dripping all the way down her torso. I got carried away. I literally gave her bloodshot eyes. Like, she's crying blood. Um, I just thought it looks really, really cool. Reminds me of Alice from Madness Returns when she is in hysteria mode. I'm fine-tuning her eyeliner right now because I realized that I did not give her a wing eyeliner, which is a must in any Hexgen creations. And I also wanted to give her some kind of like dark circle because if I have it, she's gonna have it. So now I went back with more body blushing with my pastels, so a lot of blacks, grays, and reds, and I'm also kind of sprinkling like red paint all over her as well. I don't know, just so that it's like an explosion of blood everywhere, pretty much. Um, I wanted her skin to kind of look like it's rotting as well, so it's just she's just a mixture of every monster there is, you know? Now I'm just going to add more details with the ripped part of her torso. I'm just using hot glue to kind of emulate a skin rotting type of look. And inside I added some brown yarn in there. Literally just like I took a yarn and I'm, as you can see, I'm just putting it in there, smashing it in there. It kind of has a dried out intestine type of look. And as you can see, I'm just kind of pulling it down to have it hang in. And we're going to paint everything with a bright pink first and then we will work our way into the darker shades into some blues some violets and some blacks 
So obviously I'm not an anatomy expert, so I had to look up some Google images of reference photos that I can use in terms of coloring the insides and kind of like the shapes and stuff. Um, pretty traumatizing, I would say. I posted a Instagram story about it. I was just shocked. I was, like, my life kind of changed. And so now we're working on this doll. So, yay. <laughs> Some of the red paints that I use actually dried in a matte finish, so right now I'm just going over it with some glossy varnish to make the blood more wet looking, the teeth and the gums wet. You can also use the glossy Mod Podge if you don't have a glossy varnish. So whatever works really. So now let's have the top half dry and now we can work on her lower half. And I'm just using the same exact techniques, dry brushing with black and red, make her look sick and dingy, zombie, vampire-like. And we're going to go ahead and color her intestines with reds, pinks, violets, blues, and blacks, you know, just normal colors. <laughs> It was actually kind of a fun challenge to kind of recreate the insides and make it look very realistic. At least for me, I've never tried anything like this before, so it was just really really fun and interesting to kind of play around the colors. I really had to kind of study the reference photos and look at the different colors because I'm like, wait a minute, there's like a purple hue in there and you wouldn't really think that. So reference photos helps you guys. <laughs> And here is the final look for her face and she looks absolutely terrifying. I'm really really proud of it and this is how the body separates as you can see. It's just kind of cool looking. It's very gory but as you can see the insides of her upper torso and the lower one they match really really well and I am really proud of this creation. So now let's go ahead and move on to other things. I'm currently sketching out how I want her wings to look and it is kind of like a demon bat wing type of look and we're just gonna cut it out and we're gonna use it as a pattern. And then I'm taking this large Ziploc bag that we have at home and I'm just tracing the pattern that we made and like I said, this is actually going to be so so big, it's literally like the size of her. So after cutting you should have a pair of wings from that one Ziploc bag and to add the joints and the flexibility to the wings I'm using this soft wire and I'm just gonna go ahead and hot glue that to the edges and also inside her wings. So you should have something like this, it is very very flexible, you can bend it, you can close it, you can open the wings, it's just a lot of fun when you have like a flexible wings to actually play around with. Before actually painting it with color, I first coat the entire wings with a glossy Mod Podge. This will protect the paint from actually chipping when we bend and you know when we play around with the wings, usually paints will crack eventually even if it's flexible so this will actually kind of like retain the flexibility of the paint. You can always mix it with the acrylic paints as well and you will create kind of like your own medium. Now I'm just dry brushing her wings with some blacks here and there just to give it more dimension and more realism um, to kind of really retain the bat-like look. And I'm also adding tiny veins all over her wings so when I was looking at bat wings reference photos and you can see through the light that there is veins in there and I thought that was really really cool. So this is how the wings look after I glossed it up again with the glossy Mod Podge to protect the paint and seal it. It looks so cool you guys, I am so impressed and as you can see it is so flexible, you can literally close it, open it, wiggle it around, it's just so fun. 
I'm taking this pen needle to make her sharp and long tongue and I'm using my hot glue gun on a silicone pad so that you can actually just remove it very very easily when it's dried. See? Easy peasy. And now I'm just painting it with a base of red, dry brush it with some blues, and also black. And don't forget to add gloss because tongues are wet. <laughs> So if you remember the hole that we made inside her mouth, this is the purpose. As you can see, we can attach it, detach it, and kind of play around with it. For her hair, I already prepared my black yarn wefts, and they are ready to go on her scalp. I just glued it directly to her scalp because it's going to be a messy hairstyle anyway, so this does not need to look perfect. The messier, the wilder, the better but she does receive a full set of hair like she has so much hair look at this it's crazy um i added more shorter webs in the front and then longer webs in the bottom so she kind of has like a mullet going on you know so now that we're done with her hair it's finally time to cover her up with an amazing dress I was again blessed by Deluxe Designs for actually making my vision come to life. She is so amazing, so you guys should definitely check out her Instagram. Literally, her craftsmanship is amazing. I pretty much designed a Barotsaya slash Terno kind of hybrid for this gown. Literally, you have the Terno sleeves, which is kind of like the oversized sculptural sleeves. And then you also have the shirt and the skirt. Um, so yeah, I just wanted it obviously to separate because she's gonna separate in the end. I asked her to do it in kind of like an off-white color so we can have a beautiful base for the entire garment. I wanted this dress to have a bride-like type of feel. Usually a lot of Filipino traditional dresses incorporates a lot of pearls and crystals and capiz shells because it just is very rich in the Philippines. Obviously, I'm using fake crystals and stones and all that from IKEA and craft stores, but we're going to embellish this dress as beautiful as we can. We're gonna make her say yes to the dress. I got these embroidered fabric from a local fabric store and I just cut out the embroidered part and it actually fits really really well scale wise with the gown so I'm really 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 happy about it. The traditional Filipino skirts usually have thicker fabrics and different textiles but because we wanted a bride like look I'm using the embroidered fabric just kind of like as a layer for it. And this is how the dress looks all together. It's very simple, but very, very serene and elegant at the same time. It's just very pure. And this is the time that truly breaks my heart. So I'm really, really sorry, Deluxe Designs. But I do have to destroy and distress the dress that we made. It obviously has to fit the Manananggal in her. Like, it can't be pure white and she's all bloody and dingy and gray scaly. It has to match the doll. So, unfortunately, we're doing it. <laughs> It was actually still so fun to distress all the work that we've done because I was kind of creating many storylines in my head on how she got the dress ruined, like she probably slipped or, you know, she probably got trapped in like a wire or something or like, you know, in the forest or in the trees while she's flying around. So, you know, creating many stories visually is very, very fun. So I really wanted the base color of her dress to be very like muddy and like dirt and so I started with different colors of browns, mixed a lot of water in it so that it just kind of fades in with the fabric and that's when I added more of the reds, the purples and also the blacks to really emphasize the blood around her body. So for her skirt, I knew that this was going to be more brown heavy. Obviously, she's dragging this around in mud, in concrete, in the streets, in different foliage. So it was going to be more dirty and dingier than her top. I obviously still added the blood on top by her stomach area because, 
you know, she's separated there, so she's bleeding there. Um, I added a dripping blood effect around her skirt because I thought it would be cool. And it just looks really, really good. It's a good marriage between the top and the skirt. And for a last minute detail, we are going to give her some talons. I'm not even gonna say acrylic nails. These are talons. So I'm using doll packaging right here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut mini triangles, like really, really thin triangles, uh, multiple pieces, and we're just going to super glue that onto her fingers. And obviously, it's gonna be red, because let's just imagine this is how she slices the infants that she eats. This is, looks absolutely tasty. Maybe it's one of those Filipino street foods. Ah oh well, I am a bit peckish tonight. A little nibble couldn't hurt. my sleep and was presented by this delicacy. I just wanted to try it. one who woke me up with your slithering tongue. You know even a trip from Korea to the Philippines is still tiring. I needed my sleep and you ruined it. Okay, first of all, no, I'm not pregnant. And how funny. I was about to devour your bottom half. You would have turned into ashes by daybreak without it. I think you should find a baby to eat another night since the sun is about to rise. And don't bother me again, or I will eat you. Good day! 